five months, China has arrested 329 fugitives accused of economic crimes. It is part of an ambitious anti-corruption effort, Operation Fox Hunt, which targets individuals who have fled abroad. Some 150 who were promised leniency have turned themselves in, our Hona reports. After three years on the run, Mr. Chen finally decided to return to China and turn himself in to the authorities. It's the first time he's back after fleeing to Mexico three years ago. I had complex feelings of excitement and nervousness after I got on the plane. My blood pressure kept jumping high. I grew up in China and the feeling of not being able to go back home gave me sleepless nights. Chen allegedly embezzled millions of dollars from the company he'd been working for and was placed under investigations in 2010. He fled to Mexico and began his life as a fugitive. Looking back, he calls it a nightmare and said his biggest regret was missing his daughter's wedding. Because of the language barrier, it's very difficult to survive in other countries. I missed my family so much and I felt so guilty for them. Chen is one of many fugitives accused of economic crimes to return home. China launched its Fox Hunt 2014 operation in July, targeting corrupt officials and suspects in economic crimes who have fled the country. The goal is to block the last route of retreat for corrupt officials involved in ongoing crackdowns and narrow the space for abuse of power. The Chinese Foreign Ministry has also said it is determined to fight corruption and express the hope of continued international cooperation. China has been actively seeking bilateral judicial assistance with other countries. We've signed an agreement on judicial assistance, extradition, and the transferring of convicted persons with around 63 countries. We hope to expand cooperation with relevant countries to pursue fleeing officials and their stolen assets and together combat crimes of corruption. Corrupt Chinese officials have been fleeing abroad for decades, transferring assets worth many billions of dollars overseas through money laundering and underground banks. China continues to face difficulties in the return of these fled officials due to a lack of bilateral extradition treaties and political and legal problems with some countries, including the United States, Canada and Australia, three popular destinations for Chinese economic fugitives. In a bid to overcome obstacles, experts say that these countries need to strengthen political will and abandon prejudice. At the same time, China needs to enhance communications with its countries and improve mutual trust and address judicial challenges in a pragmatic and feasible way. On that CCTV, Beijing. This meeting today in its annual gathering in Beijing to map out the country's economy and reform plans for the coming year. Now, a key task of those attending the Central Economic Work Conference will be to set up next year's GDP growth target. Some influential advisors are also recommending that the government cut its 2015 growth target to 7% from this year's 7.5%. Mantra policies and financial and state-owned enterprises reforms are also among the key topics being discussed at the conference. Michelle Vandenberg has our top story. Policymakers are expected to acknowledge challenges in maintaining rapid growth while deepening structural reforms. Analysts say that there is a high chance the leadership will agree to adopt a lower gross domestic product growth target for next year. By setting about approximately 7%, uh, it's also there to uh, point to the direction that China will not really focus on the smooth growth of uh, GDP in terms of the quantity, but rather we can allow room for reform to allow more of the uh, quality and productivity. The conference, expected to last two days or more, will set the tone for monetary and fiscal policies in the year ahead. While the central bank's monetary stance may officially remain prudent, it is expected to effectively adopt a more accommodative policy. Clearly it's the government's objective to try to de-lever the economy, to reduce the amount of credit in the economy. And for that you need a tight monetary policy. But at the same time, they want to avoid a hard landing. And I think the, the recent interest rate reductions from the People's Bank is part of that adjustment process, is part of this managed process of slowing economic growth slowing the growth of credit, while at the same time avoiding a hard landing of the economy. 
policymakers are also expected to lay out priorities for reforms. They will also set economic performance targets, including GDP, inflation, fiscal revenue, and money supply growth. Michelle Vandenberg, CC.